the last time, we uh, tried to define what we mean by a distribution function in a generalized manner, what we mean by a PDF in general, and then uh, and the definition of both of the functions rely on the integrals with respect to uh, the right measure. Okay. This is what that we did. Then we defined what we mean by a random variable, okay, and what we mean by a sigma algebra generated by a random variable, okay. Then we also shown that every random variable gave rise to a probability space, and that probability space is in which the, and that probability space the underlying as set is R, and uh, the sigma algebra is the Morel sigma algebra, okay. and the probability measure is the measure B exactly and we define it in such a way. Then using this X, we also define what we mean by um, you know distribution function of a random variable X. While when we define yeah. distribution function and density function here, we didn't give the reference of a random variable. But what would be the meaning of a distribution <coughs> function with respect to uh, distribution function of a random variable? And then we also said that if x is absolutely continuous, finally, then you know uh, you can you can have a, a PDF as well for it that for the random variable. Okay, for for the random variable x. So this is what you call the executive summary of the things that we did last time. Now, interestingly, if I have, so let's observe it. So if I have a probability space, okay, imagine I have a probability space and a random variable, x, then I know that I have another, what do you call, uh, probability space that is induced by this random variable. And uh, we also have the Lebesgue measure M. Okay. Now, what we can do is obviously I can define the integral of something okay, with respect to this probability measure. Um, I can define integral of the same thing, something with respect to probability measure induced by x and I can define an integral with respect to the Lebesgue measure actually. Okay. Yeah. Are you getting the point? The question is, is there a relationship between all these actually? Okay, so can I express an integral which is in the which is in terms of a probability measure into the in the terms of an integral with respect to uh, the integral with respect to uh, the probability measure induced by x and with respect to the Lebesgue integral a Lebesgue measure. Okay. This is what that we are heading into. That how can I interrelate them? Are they connected with each other? If they are connected with each other, how they are connected? would be the, the key thing that I would like to do. Okay. Before moving ahead, I would like to quickly put a proposition and a, and a very short concise proof of it. Um, uh, you can do things in detail. So here's a proposition. So as per book, this proposition is 1.37, a book by Thomas. Okay. For finance. So it says that imagine you have two probability spaces, omega f uh, mu and omega t 
till the f till the and mu till. Okay, so you have two probability spaces and a map phi. Okay, and this map is a map from omega to omega tilde such that okay. Uh, the phi inverse of any A, okay, where this A is from the sigma field F, belongs to the sigma field tilde no. F. Tilde belongs to F. Okay, it's a kind of a map which kind of you know, maps the measurable sets onto the measurable sets. Okay? Measurable sets onto the measurable sets. In default. Okay? And, uh, and what? Default. And if, if G is a measurable map, If G tilde is a measurable map from omega tilde into the extended rail line, okay, minus infinity plus infinity, and is measurable. I keep it boring statement, but it's a, it's a beautiful conclusion. Uh, if G tilde is measurable and uh, when you compose G tilde with uh, the map phi, okay, I'm giving it a name G, okay, then this G is going to be a map from where to where? It's going to be a map from tilde. Extended to the extended rail line minus infinity to plus infinity, okay, is measurable, okay, that's measurable, and and the integral of G with respect to D mu over omega. Take 
Okay. And I, I, I take the inverse of this quantity. Okay. G G tilde composition phi inverse. And I operate it onto some element in F tilde. Okay. Then what you're gonna what's gonna happen? So okay. So first I need to show that G is measurable. And then I need to show that their integral if exists are equal actually. I can't whether they are finite or not. Should be. So if I have to show G is measurable, then I need to do what? I need to show that the G inverse of a Borel set belongs to F tilde. Oh, yes, in effect, yes. So this must belong to the effect. So what would be G of B? So it's going to be phi inverse composition, G tilde inverse composition of the down to B. Okay? Then this guy belongs where? <coughs> belongs to, since G tilde is measurable, so it belongs to F tilde. Okay? And why, when phi inverse operated or to something that is in F tilde, then by assumption it belongs to F actually. So this whole thing belongs to F actually. Okay? It shows that G is measurable. And the next thing that I would like to show that you know if I think that one of them is one of them exists, then the both should be equal actually. <coughs> so I'll just give you a sketch that how to do it. Um, as you know, or you might have in your head that if you want to prove something about the general a statement or proposition about general measurable functions always start with uh, simple functions. Okay. So try to prove it for the simple functions. And once you prove it for the simple functions, then the next thing should be that you prove it for the measurable non-negative function because we know that we can approximate simple functions uh, or non-negative measurable functions by simple functions actually. Okay. Then applying monotone convergence theorem would help actually. And then finally, you know, since a, a general function can be written as, you know, as, as, as the difference of two measurable functions, you know, f plus and, you know, positive part and negative part, okay, um, then the result would easily follow it. Okay, so I'm just giving you a quick sketch that how to do it. So let S tilde be a simple function, okay, you know, which can be written as i equal to 1 to n, Si an indicator function of Ai, okay, on uh, omega tilde. Size are the are the numbers from zero to you know could be possibly possible no zero to the finite actually okay and uh, and AIs are what and AIs are from such that they partition your omega to you okay so this is what is the case. Such that their union I want to want to n give you omega tilde. Omega tilde. And they are just joined as well. Mm -hmm. Write it and AI intersection is J is mm -hmm. empty. I is not J. Same. This is what. Uh, how can I turn it into the a simple function on 
on what? F. On omega actually. So this is a simple function on omega tilde. How can I turn it into a simple function on omega? I know that if I compose it with phi, this will do the job actually. Okay. And consider. Consider S. Okay. That is S tilde composition phi actually.
there is going to be always a partition for omega tilde that, that if you have a subset of say for example it's complement will be yeah, yeah so at least you can find two sets actually a and a and complement which will partition basically the whole sets so finding a partition is not a big problem so what does this shows that okay so the claim is true if uh, I have a simple function how about in case of okay case okay, so just do this and try to argue for the rest for yourself when when g is something non-negative or maybe g is something non-negative okay and tilde is something non-negative if this is the case then we proved an approximation lemma which says that there exists a sequence of simple functions which is decreasing non-negative non decreasing function that approximates i equal f r belongs to n such that okay Limited so this n. s n s tilde or n of s n tilde approximates g tilde as n goes to infinity but point wise actually S n of x converges to g tilde of x for every x and x tilde. Okay. So fine. So if I have s tilde, then can I can construct a function. So what would be g actually? Okay. So so for me the g is a g tilde composition function. So in other words, can I find s Decreasing sequence are maybe okay. Non-negative measurable function. It's non-decreasing sequences. So there's increasing sequence in some sense, uh, such that that approximates the G actually. So I already have a size actually. So I can play the same trick. A size composition. Okay. So then. G is this, then and verify this claim. Okay. Si, which is Si tilde composition phi. Okay. Where I is from natural numbers. Okay. Uh, is what? Is, is is a similar kind of a sequence, in other, in other words, it's non-decreasing, non-decreasing, okay, and, and it's converges to G, and SI converges, or maybe SN converges to G as M goes to infinity, okay, we can easily show it up. Okay. And then I can go to the final piece here. So, what is, I'll, I'll use the monotone convergence theorem uh, What would be G tilde D nu tilde? G D nu. G D nu. So the G D nu is same as, um, by this definition, uh, limit. Okay, integral of limit of S n D D nu. And then monotone convergence theorem allows me to take this out. Okay. Take this out. Okay. So this would be limit S n D nu. But I have already proved for a simple function that S n D nu 
is same as a tilde d e one. Okay, so this would be same as s. Okay, e one tilde limit s n tilde d nu tilde. And then again using monotone convergence theorem, I can take this limit inside. And if I take this limit inside, g. this is gonna be finally g delta d. This is gonna be g delta d. Yeah. You can prove the general case for yourself. I think. So this is what essentially. And this is an important trick actually. So whenever you want to prove a claim for a uh, general measurable function, prove it for a simple function, and prove it for you know uh, non-negative measurable function, and then prove for the general measurable function. Because I know that the general measurable function, okay, is, is, I can write it in this manner. Actually. Both are the negative. Alright, so what does, what conclusion we get from this? Imagine, I have two measurable spaces and a map, you know, uh, which maps the measurable sets, whose inverse of it maps the measurable sets onto the measurable sets, okay, such that, that the measure of the set and its inverse image is same actually, you know, on the, the respective... Um, so would you call this isometric map? What do you mean map? Would you call this map isometric? You can call it kind of an isometric map. Okay. Um, this kind of a measure preserving map. Anyway. But be careful when you are using terms actually because should use the terms which are appropriate in appropriate manner, uh, appropriate place actually. So if g tilde is a measurable function and you compose it with phi, the g will be measurable. And these two guys are going to be such kind of a function for for the back and integral with respect to mu and mu tilde are same. Actually. Okay. So this is what the result is. Okay. Boring result. Not that boring, but okay. Uh, but it's a very useful actually. Now I can come to, to come back to my question that that was that okay if I have a, a, a probability space and have a random variable then I know that this random variable induces a probability measure and then I want to know that is there a relationship between the integrals with respect to the probability measure and integral with respect to the induced probability measure and integral with respect to the Lebesgue measure are they related in some manner? So let's move for it. Move, move. So let's move to it. Some at the like one to one to 
infinity of x i is multiplied by the probability that x is going to be x i. Thing that 